Have you ever pondered why the image on the Shroud of Turin, the alleged burial cloth of Jesus Christ, is a negative rather than a positive? The Shroud, whether viewed in person or through a high-detail reproduction, presents an image that is almost paradoxical in its nature. The figure of the crucified man etched into the fabric is not a positive image, as one might expect, but a negative. This peculiar characteristic of the Shroud's image is not merely a passing oddity. It raises significant questions about the origins of the Shroud and the methods by which it was created. Consider this. To fully appreciate and recognize the image on the Shroud, one must stand six to eight feet away, step any closer, and the image becomes lost its details blending into the fabric. Now, this fact in itself poses a compelling argument against the theory of forgery. How could a forger, working up close with the cloth, create an image that only becomes clear when viewed from a distance? Moreover, why would a forger choose to make a negative image? The process of creating a negative image, especially in the era when the shroud is believed to have originated, would have been complex and time-consuming. It would require a level of technical skill and understanding of optics that seems implausible for the time. But perhaps the most perplexing question is not how, but why. What would be the motive for creating such an image? If the intention were to deceive, surely a positive image would have been more convincing, more immediately recognizable to the human eye. The choice to create a negative image seems to serve no purpose other than to add another layer of mystery to the already enigmatic shroud. In this mystery lies the charm of the Shroud's negative image, an enigma that continues to baffle us. This cryptic artifact continues to spark curiosity and debate, its secrets yet to be fully unraveled, its story yet to be definitively told. And now let's turn our attention to the proportions of the body depicted on the Shroud. The Shroud of Turin displays an image that, to the untrained eye, might appear haphazard. However, artists like Dame Isabel Pichek have studied this relic and found that the proportions of the body are absolutely perfect. They align with the precise measurements and ratios that artists use when creating lifelike representations of the human form. It's as if the image was projected onto the cloth rather than painted or formed by direct contact. But the mystery deepens. Science, with all its modern advancements, has established that the wounds which appear on the image were present on the cloth before the presence of the body image itself. This might seem counterintuitive, but it's akin to handwriting a message on a sheet of paper, yet dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and inserting all the commas and periods before you've written any words on the paper. One has to wonder, how did an alleged forger manage such a feat? The logical sequence would have been to first create the body image and then add the wounds, yet the evidence suggests the opposite happened. Moreover, the blood detected on these wounds has been proven to be human blood with a type AB classification. This isn't paint or dye, it's real blood. The question then arises, did a forger go to the extreme lengths of using actual human blood and somehow manage to place it on the cloth before the body image was formed? The complexity of these tasks, the perfection of the body's proportions and the presence of wounds prior to the body image, all these add layers of intrigue that further complicate the theory of forgery. One must ask, could an alleged forger from centuries ago have had the knowledge and the skill to create such a convincing artifact? Could they have anticipated the scientific scrutiny that the Shroud would be subjected to in the future? The perfection of the body's proportions and the presence of wounds prior to the body image further complicates the theory of forgery. The blood on the Shroud, a critical piece of this puzzle, presents its own set of intriguing questions. It's not just any blood, mind you, but human blood, type AB to be specific. Now, that's an interesting fact in itself, but it gets even more fascinating. You see, as blood ages, it turns brown. But the blood on the shroud, it's red. How is it possible for blood to remain red for over two millennia? It sounds like a perfect case for a forgery, doesn't it? But uh, hold on a moment. Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. Blood chemists have an interesting theory about this. They found that when a person is under great stress or severe suffering, such as one might experience during a crucifixion, a pigment called bilirubin enters the blood. This pigment, my dear listeners, has the ability to maintain the red color of the blood. Now, let's take a step back and consider the sequence of events on the shroud. 
The wounds appear on the cloth before the image of the body itself. It's as if someone dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and inserted all the commas and periods before writing any words on a piece of paper. Could an alleged forger have put the blood on the wounds before the wounds were even located on the cloth? And here's the real kicker. Did this supposed forger use actual human blood and not just that, but tortured his donor so the blood would remain red for centuries? All this to paint the blood on the linen cloth before there was an image just to fool people centuries later. It seems far-fetched, doesn't it? Yet the blood on the shroud remains red, defying the normal course of aging. The presence of red blood that's centuries old, another mystery that challenges the notion of forgery. As we draw to a close, let's revisit the fascinating mysteries of the shroud. The shroud's image, a negative rather than a positive, is a remarkable anomaly. Its visibility is optimal from a distance of six to eight feet, confounding the notion of a forger working up close. Then there's the impeccable proportions of the body, lauded by artists like Dame Isabel Pichek, which further add to the shroud's intrigue. The wounds, which science confirms were present before the body image, and the blood, proven to be human and of type AB, present an intriguing paradox. The blood, remarkably still red, hints at the unimaginable stress borne by the donor akin to a crucifixion victim. This sequence of events defies logic, making the forgery theory seem implausible. The Shroud of Turin, a piece of cloth that weaves an intricate tale of mystery, continues to captivate and challenge us, centuries after its discovery.